while it is true I have remained a tech hoarder, an image I am still trying to promote on this channel, even us tech hoarders need to get new smartphones now and then. After an incident involving some kitchen tiles and my trusting Samsung Galaxy S8, I have come to a rather disconcerting truth. I am quite dependent on my daily smartphone and due to a busy schedule involving my day job and other duties, I simply could not afford to burn through countless second-hand phones or mega deals in order to get a new device. Buying and returning countless units from online stores will not do it for me. Never you mind that I am also moonlighting as some sort of knowledgeable YouTube figure in this whole game. Therefore, I would have to do this proper. Anyway, countless hours of reviews and mega deals later, I have come to the realization that I still need and like Samsung Android flagships. Enter then the S20. A new smartphone, well, new for me anyway, and here it is. So without any further intro, let's get to, to unboxing it, see its highs and lows and what it's like to use it in 2022. And perhaps in some future videos, I shall speak about why I chose this model in 2022, what I compared it with and why it's still the best all-rounder, at least in my opinion. So without any further ado, let's get on with breaking this nice seal. There we go. Really, I haven't done this quite so often, so let's see what we get here. Should be interesting. By the way, this is an actual unboxing. I haven't really checked out this phone beforehand. So here we go. Quite pretty. Let's take it out and see what's what. Yes, it's the cosmic gray variant. Not so impressive, but quite a handsome looking fellow. Yeah, the sides are uh, chromed. And thank goodness there's still a charging brick in the box, though the charging speeds are nothing to write home about. And here we should have the charging cable, yes, and you can see it's a USB Type-C to USB Type-C deal. No more big um, USB uh, ports here. And, well, what do you know? I get pair of headphones with a proper USB Type-C connector. This is pretty nifty. Actually, Samsung has managed to impress me somewhat because I didn't expect these, uh, these headphones. My biggest gripe with this phone is uh, the lack of uh, sensors, features and connections. One of them being the much lamented, uh, well, 3.5 millimeter jack port, which I shall sorely miss. But nevertheless, we're getting ahead of ourselves. This was the unboxing, so let's get on with the review. First impressions then. Impeccable construction. Uh, predictably, I went with a rather uh, safe but boring color choice, the gray one. I thought it would be a disappointment, but I stand corrected. Um, there's something about this deep yet subtle hue that just catches my eye. Uh, if I'm permitted another car analogy, it's like the deep wet grey from the 50s to the 70s cars when metallic flakes were not introduced in car paint. It's quite catchy, if not bold, though it is a huge fingerprint magnet, as you can see right here. The frame, of course, is aluminium, but it has a chrome finish, and I suspect it actually is chrome or nickel-plated, so it can withstand some abuse. 
aluminium being the softer metal. There is also IP68 protection, which I think is a must in 2022. And the glass on front and back is Gorilla Glass 6. By the way, mine, my S8 still has the screen protection it came with from the factory. I know some of you roll with the no screen protection and no case and whatever. Uh, given the previous incident with my S8, I would rather hope to keep this S20 pristine or at least in impeccable working order for as long as possible. Therefore, I will, shall not be removing the screen protection. Um, by the way, it's a good screen protector. Yeah, sure, it scratches easily, but then again, all of them do and the glass ones break, so there you have it. I'm also very pleased by the dual SIM port of this phone and the 120 gigabytes of storage, which are sufficient for me for now at least. Remember, I come from 64 gigs on the S8, so this should be plenty for me at least for now. Also, it appears that this phone is one of the last Samsung flagships that comes with an SD card extension slot, though it is shared with the dual SIM tray, so either you have two trays or extra storage. But I don't mind the setup, I find it quite useful. I have been living with this device for a couple of days now, so I can further vouch for the other benefits. 120 Hz refresh rate make this screen a winner. I don't need a better one and I know it only works with high refresh rate in full HD, so not the high res setting, but still it's plenty crisp and detailed for me, though it does seem to hurt the battery life somewhat. Which brings me to this 4000 mAh unit that powers the device. It's fine and it's a proper upgrade compared to my old S8 with its 3000 mAh unit. It's fine and it's a proper upgrade compared to my old S8's 3000 mAh unit and to the S10's 3200 mAh unit but it's still not a range, range monster. One full day of moderate use, maybe 17 to 18 hours with some 4 to 6 hours screen time is all you will get before you reach the 15% battery warning. It's not bad and I cannot vouch for that scenario yet, but given my previous Samsung experiences, I think this is feasible. Also, the fast charging is not quite so fast at 25 watts wired, but it's plenty for now. By the way, it's uh, also mentioned that you can charge this with a wireless charger, a uh, fast wireless charging at 15 watts. You cannot compare it to 65 watt charging prowess that some flagship killers out there offer but those don't have wireless charging at lower price points, which this one has, thankfully. Actually, the charging method was one of the deciding criteria for my next phone. And as another hardware added bonus, this is actually the last Samsung Galaxy S series to come with a power brick included in the bundle, though mine seems to make a rather unnerving buzzing sound, which I have yet to decide if it's an acceptable bug or it underlines some other problem with it. Personally, I don't mind it, as I seldom use it. I haven't really looked into the camera all that much, but they seem to work just fine. I can get OK 4K videos and I can get some blurred background and macro pics, so I'm quite pleased with this setup. On the software side of things, 
transferring everything from my S8 to this S20 was performed seamlessly with the smart switch app and I guess Samsung's One UI is okay this time around as well and I do keep it updated and uh, really I don't normally do that with devices but enough praising the S8 let's see what's not so great about this phone and I shall be starting with the missing hardware actually a lot of it I cannot help but feel disappointed that newer devices pose this rather hip and minimalist image with huge potent screen and in the background manufacturers really seem to get away with deleting essential and useful features no more headphone jack I will miss you the most little uh, 3.5 millimeter rounded hole at least Sammy was kind enough to feature in a set of USB type C wired headphones in the box that's most pleasing and unexpected no more pulse and SPO2 sensors anywhere but hey how are how but hey how else are phone manufacturers supposed to sell smartwatches if they offer the same tech on several complementary devices I guess I could go without these last features what I could not go without is the IP68 dust and water protection wireless charging top tier chipset great cameras impressive screen and just an all-round balanced package at an affordable price as I have paid for this brand new and unlocked EU S20 470 euros or so so what's your take on this is it a lot is it acceptable well I know it's not the deal of the century but after na navigating through a sea of never-ending mid-rangers and flagship fighters I have found that given a realistic and restrained budget the best offer for me was an older flagship so thanks for watching and remember I buy mostly obsolete and quirky gadgets so you don't have to cheers